The following is an overview of the JOM Spotlight Tool, a domain knowledge, search, and mapping resource. The tool is a proof of concept designed for Windows OS systems. Its intent is to highlight and facilitate searches within the full body of research published in the Journal of Operations Management. What we're going to cover today is how the interface that you see before you and its multiple features can be used to identify domains of study, their history, and future research opportunities. This interactive tool is currently housed in an Excel macro-enabled workbook platform. As you can see, the interface is dominated by the graph in the middle. And that's where we're going to start in our discussion. This plot is what we call a bubble chart. It is much like a scatter plot in that there are X values, in this case a range of years that we can modify, and Y values which are also based on the user's choice. The individual points are papers. In any given view, the red bubble represents the focal article that has been selected, for which details are provided on the right panel. Purple articles are those that cite it, and orange articles are those that it cites. Again, all of this is currently deployed solely within the universe of the Journal of Operations Management. Let's look at some of these article details. As you'll see on the right panel, the Hanfield 1993 article is titled, A Resource Dependence Perspective of Just-In-Time Purchasing. For a selected paper, the authors are listed along with their Scopus author IDs. The keywords that are listed in the article also are provided along with the abstract. For lengthier texts, clicking on the abstract area provides a pop-up view of the abstract, which you can scroll for viewing. You can also copy and paste from this point. But there are better ways to save this information as well as we will discuss. At the top of this right panel you have the year, number of citations as of this date. The total number of items referenced by this manuscript is 67, with two among those being earlier JOM articles. The article term score is 3. As we will discuss, this is the number of the terms found in the article title, article abstract, keywords, or author list matching those search for. See the lower left field of the interface, dedicated to article scoring. In this particular instance, the size of the article's bubble again in red also corresponds to that score. Other articles depicted in the graph can have smaller or larger numbers depending on their content and the search term specified. Finally, in the upper right-hand corner, we have a version of the Scopus article ID, which appears in blue. This contains an article hyperlink, which upon clicking will open a browser and web page specific to that Scopus entry. If you have a Scopus account, you can directly access the full article from there. If you'd like to shift your focus to an alternate article shown in the graph, perhaps one that cites the current focal article, all you need to do is interact with the graph. You can make sure that the graph is interactive by clicking on the button in the lower portion just below the graph that says, Make Chart Points Clickable. I'll click on that once here. Now, if I select one of these purple points, then the focus of the plot shifts to making that the vocal article. The newly selected article's details are provided on the right panel. Once again, articles that are citing it are presented in purple. Articles that it references are in orange. If I go back in time, so to speak, and select an earlier paper, then I will similarly be shifting the focal vantage point and the ego set of articles that either are cited or cite that focal article. Now we don't have to strictly select the items that are colored. I can also select any of the background bubbles. These may be considering similar topics or rather different ones. Ultimately, they were set in the background only because they are not part of the ego set of the current focal article. Now let's move on to see what the other features are in this tool. Users can specify what details of the article set they would like to view along the y-axis and rendered by the bubble size. The y-axis drop-down allows the user to choose between the total number of citations, an absolute count or log form, the article term scores, or the number of references to prior JOM articles. The log form is actually the log of the count of citations plus 1, divided by the log of 2. Other options may be added in future versions. These numerical metrics will be presented either as a percentage of some designated maximum or as a percentage rank relative to the full set of articles in JOM. If the percentage of a maximum option is selected, the user is further permitted to specify whether that maximum is based on the full set of JOM articles or only those articles meeting filtering criteria, which we will discuss. Users can also select whether that maximum is based on all years of data available or only the specific year that the article was published in. The bubble size can similarly be adjusted. Let me demonstrate how some of these modifications might take place without changing our filters. If I want to present my y-axis to capture things in percentage rank, I can select that option. In this case, there is a marginal shift in the graphical presentation. 
If I want to change to the non-log number of citations instead, again, the view will shift. Some views will prove more useful than others depending upon what you are looking for. I can also change the background. If I don't really want to see all of those other articles that are not in my focal articles ego set, I can make the background lighter. Now the highlighted items pop out a little bit more. If I want more emphasis on those articles outside of the ego sets, then I can make the background darker. I'll return to more of an in-between setting for now. Other features include shifting the emphasis of the graph by way of either filtering and or modifying what qualifies article term scoring. To begin with, I can adjust the range of years that I would like to view. For example, I might only want to view articles that have been published after 1990. This effectively filters out all articles prior to that date. I can also filter out articles that do not contain a full set of specific terms in either their title, abstract, keywords, or author details, depending on my selection. I can specify those terms by typing them into the first field on the left and selecting where to look for these terms. Only articles that have all of these terms in one of the areas checked will remain in view. If nothing is checked, or if no term is provided in this field, then such filtering will not become active. Terms used in such filtering could be topics, methods, or author names or IDs. An alternative is to filter out articles that do not include at least one term in one of the article features listed. The second field on the left allows a user to specify which terms to look for. As long as one of these terms is found in either the title, abstract, keywords, or author information, if these areas are selected for search, an article will remain in the view. Keep in mind that each of these filtering techniques can filter out the focal article. The article will remain focal and its information will remain on the right panel. However, its red bubble will not appear in the field of the graph. Article scoring is the other mechanism available for distinguishing work specific to a topic or author of interest. Let's see how that works in practice. If I add additional terms like, let's say, markets to the lower left field in the interface or even a partial term like, mark, with the title, abstract, and keyword options selected, any articles with that additional term in these areas of search will see their scores increase by one. If it's an uncommon term, this might not be a massive change. Other instances, provided that either the y-axis or the bubble size is based on article term scores, the change might be more substantial. Finally, as I mentioned, there is also an option to keep records of things that you might have discovered in your examination. That is, perhaps you'd like to keep a record of the details of articles you've encountered for further reading. There's a quick way to get that done as well. At the bottom of the screen, we have several record copying options. You can hit Selection, and the full details of the focal article will be recorded to a sheet called Records. We can view that. Here's the full reference in a kind of standard reference schema, along with the Scopus link. You can also record the details of the full ego sets of focal articles. That is, record all of the orange and the purple as well as the red items, regardless of whether they appear in the graph view. Furthermore, if you are filtering articles and your result is a subset of works that meet some search criteria but which don't necessarily reference each other, the recording of such a subset is also possible. Keep in mind that the larger the set, the longer recording will take. And of course, if we are interested in clearing our record, we have that option as well. I hope that you've enjoyed this overview. Try out the tool, let us know about your experience, and feel free to share recommendations for future enhancements. If you have difficulty getting your Excel application to permit functionality, consider viewing the How to Unblock video provided at www.jom-hub.com.